We're in Jessamine County today at Nick Peel's place. Nick makes some really cool knives. And you got in your hand, obviously, the beginnings of a knife. You mm -hmm. can see kind of the shape coming. Oh, it's kind of warm, I can feel it. Yeah, it's still a little hot. Let's talk about knives in general. Now, I buy lots of knives. I like to, of course, you have to have them for different things, skinning right. and, and cooking and all that kind of stuff. Right. What makes a good knife keep an edge? I hate, I got so <laughs> many knives that can't keep an edge. What is the deal with a knife that won't keep an edge? Well, uh, number one, knife's got to have uh, carbon in. That's what makes them hard to keep an edge. Well, the knife uh, has to be tempered right. Uh, now, for the beginner, what's that mean? What do you mean tempering? Well, right? tempering, uh, number one, you would harden the blade. You, I would heat it up in the forge, uh, quench it, and when it's cooled down really fast, it hardens it. It makes it brittle hard, it's too hard to even use. So then you temper it, you draw that back, take a little bit of that hardness out of it, you just bring a little heat to it and draw it back. Mm -hmm. Well, when a knife gets dull, it's gonna do two, one of two things. Either that little bitty fine edge is gonna break, fracture, or it's gonna bend over. Mm -hmm. I'll do a test with a little brass rod and I can uh, put that quarter inch brass rod in my vise and I can bear pressure on the knife when I'm done. And that edge will actually flex and then come back. Now, if it, flex, if it bends, it stays bent, I know that edge is too soft. If it breaks out, I know it's too hard. So I've got to adjust my heat and go back. Wow, you know. so it's that fine too. So it really is, and you can get even, you know, you can get really, really fine with it. But my knives, I, I can generally uh, gut a deer, fill the rest of the deer, and when I can skin out deer, work that deer up and put it in the freezer and never have to sharpen it. Well, I'm gonna step out of the way. I wanna see what you do with this thing. And All righty. I'm gonna watch you get it cranked up over here. Alrighty, I'm trying to draw a taper out of this blade, uh, this bar here. I'm going to thin this on down. Well, nire it down and thin it down. We'll draw a point on it. Stick it in the forge. One thing about forging these blades is you don't want to overheat them. You get them, like you see on TV and some of the movies, they pull it out of the fire and the sparks just go everywhere where they're burning the carbon out of it. And that, that, you don't want to do that. Now, did you learn by trial and error? Did you talk to a lot of folks or? combination of both. I started out with trial and error and it didn't work too good. <laughs> it's mostly error. So I started working with a guy with Pike Lick, uh, John Wade Walker. He he made some really nice knives. First knives I ever seen that was really good. And uh, I was about, see that's about as hard as I want that. So he started telling me some stuff about it. Draw that down. I seen his stuff, which he'd tell me just a little bit to keep me hooked. I'd go home, mess something up, and he'd say, why do you do it like that? Well, he didn't tell me no different. He gave me a bar of steel. He really started me. He gave me a bar of steel, something like this, and it was about six foot long. And I took it home. I got one knife out of it. That whole bar. Because <laughs> I messed the others up. Another thing I learned to do is, on my own here, Stay away from that point once you get it kind of shaped, you'll have a tendency and you'll get that too thin way too quick. And it's hard to put it back. Actually, you can't put it back, but what I've done, I'm drawing this out. I'm, I want to put a taper from uh, the spine here. This is the spine back here toward the Ricasso, where you uh, handle will start. I want to taper this out. So I'm drawing a taper in the blade that way. Also drawing it this way. Give us all the parts of a knife. Well, what I'm doing right now is the tang. Where your handle go? Uh, I've already got hammered out. Gotta go back in your handle. That's the tang. This area right in here is called the Ricasso. And of course, then you got your blade. They call it, this taper is the stale taper. It goes from here to there. From uh, back here to your point. Uh, I've got this blade hammered out, so and that's it on the forging process. Where you go from there? Well, grinding would be my next step. That belt's pretty warm, but it's getting all this bad stuff so I don't 
destroy my new belt. I'll do that on both sides, and then I'll straighten out the profile. That's just the first stop. Then I'll I'll put my new belt on and I'll hoss it in there and grind right straight down and drag it out. It's starting to look like a knife. I'm trying to look like a knife. And then grind that off. Of course, pull any taper. Need to check for everything being straight. Just as you go, you try to keep that very edge center. Mm -hmm. You know. Sometimes I'll look at it after I forward it. <laughs> I think I got it straight. I get it in a good light. Dang, I ain't straight so that. <laughs> But you know when it's soft, that's not when it's annealed, and you can go ahead and you can hammer it back straight and everything. So that's pretty much it on that. And this is what I start out with. I get roughed in everything, and that's that's where I go to before I temper it. So I will start out with the 50 grit belt, and then I go to 120, and then I go to 220, and then I'll temper it. And then before I put the handle on everything, I'll finish up with a lot of hand sanding and mm -hmm. take all the marks out. And I'll go on up to 320 by hand. Put the satin finish on it. But uh, put my stamp in it now. And uh, that's got my initials in the cross. So put the cross on there because I believe Jesus Christ and what he did for me. And I put him before me. Anyhow, I'm gonna try to stamp this straight. And I always say a little prayer when I do this. <laughs> I say, Lord, help me get this straight. Because if you don't, it's, it's going to be crooked for 100 years from now. <laughs> Man, most of the time I have to hit it again. So, I did pretty good on that. Slide these up on your tank after I put the guard on or whatever, and you stack these up on this particular style. Oh, so that's what this is right yeah, here. Yeah, leather. Wow. Yeah. And then, that looks uh, good too. Stack all this up, kind of get it in a vise or a big pair of clamps and push it all together, which I epoxy everything, push it up, drill and put a pin through it. These knives right here, any one of these knives, mm -hmm. would be a great knife for just about anything, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, about, about anything. This one here is, you know, it's really good for kitchen stuff or whatever, but. See, I put, it's got the flex, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's, one thing I was talking about the taper that makes it really good, it's 3 16 here and it, and it goes all the way to the tip. And this one here I carry all the time, I, that's that's one I pack in the woods all the time, most of the time, it's, it's a rough looking long knife. That looks like a tomato slicer. Another right there. job, yeah. <laughs> I want to hear this from a guy who makes knives yeah. and uses knives. I want to see you sharpen a knife. All right. Well, and tell us why you sharpen it that particular way. Well, you sharpen a knife, I'll just hold it here, that's generally what I do. I generally don't even lay them down. But uh, if you can hold that blade down and bring it up just a little bit, and you can feel that thing drag, and you want to act like you're trying to shave the top of that stone off, mm -hmm. is what you want to do. Keep your arm good and stiff is one of the things. You don't want to go down there wobbling it this mm -hmm. way. But keep your arm good and stiff, make a few licks like that, and back that away. Just like that. And, uh, Keep a little oil on your stone. If you have one of these old stones, you need to take you some uh, dish detergent, whatever, alcohol like that, and wash it out, get these pores cleaned out, mm -hmm. and so it's still cut. So, because you, you're actually cutting, you know, you're taking off steel. Well, I want to thank you for taking time out of your busy day. You could be doing a lot of other All stuff. Right, thanks for hanging out with Kentucky Field. Well, I appreciate y'all coming down here. I've Absolutely. had a good time showing. I've talked knives all day. <laughs> That's good. Thanks so much. I appreciate it.